Hello, my friends. Welcome to Real Love Real Stories TV and podcast. A platform for sharing love stories and dating stories and for finding hope. I'm Kanu, I'm your host, and you are tuning in to Season 2, Episode 1. This week's episode is brought to you by Real Love Real Stories Shopify store. Enter episode 10 to get your 10% discount. And now let me introduce you to my friend Beatrice who's joining me for this episode. Enjoy her stories. So let me introduce to you to, uh, to Beatrice and I know I'm saying that wrong. So, um, do me a favor and sort of pronounce it for people to hear how you pronounce your name. Yes, Beatrice in Spanish, Beatrice in English. Okay, okay. Yeah, so thanks for joining me today. I'm so excited. Thank you for having me. I know this is going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so today, you know, I'm kind of shifting gears a little bit and talking about dating stories. So can you give my audience a little bit of context of who you are, sort of your age group and, uh, you know, who's Beatriz? Did I say that right? Yes, yes you did. Awesome. You got it. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> so I am, uh, I was born in the Dominican Republic, raised in the South Bronx, very proud to be from the Bronx. And I am a teacher. So I'm a special ed teacher at the high school level. I'm 26 years old, um, which is interesting because I look like a teenager and I teach teenagers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I also mentioned that I did, I did pole dancing. So I still consider myself a pole dancer, although I'm taking time off because of an injury. But it's a big part of my life. I competed. I performed. I am still an instructor. And, yeah, it's very badass. And everything I do is just about uplifting people and being a good person and helping people kind of see, not kind of, but actually see their potential. And that's also helped me see my potential. So, yeah, that's like in a nutshell who I am. I'm just a big ball of fun <laughs> and anxiety at the same time. But that's the millennial struggle, you know. There you go. There you go. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Um, you know, just to start off with, maybe you can share um, what has been like the most memorable date that you've been on that you can think of? Yeah. So my first day after being in a long term relationship, I was very nervous, um, but I went to go have pizza with a guy and the entire time I'm thinking, oh, my God, I'm like ruining this date. I have nothing to talk about. I don't know what to do. Um, next thing I know, we're in a park. And as a former uh, pole dancer and pole dance instructor, I see a skate park and I see a gate and I'm like, I need to climb this. And all of a sudden, my nerves went away. So we climbed the fence and we weren't supposed to be there. So we had to hide <laughs> under a ramp. And we stayed under the ramp for a little bit. We were talking. He was sick. So we decided not to kiss each other. But the intensity was there. And we wanted to so badly. But we didn't. Oh. And I remember feeling like it was torture. Uh, and we were being bitten by mosquitoes. So then I was like, okay, it's time to go. <laughs> and we hopped back over. And I scraped like the back of my legs and I'm just bleeding and I'm really sad because I wore shorts to show off my legs and my butt and now there's <laughs> blood on them <laughs> but he was so cool he was like let's just go get you cleaned up so we went to the pharmacy he got me no sport and band-aids and then takes me to a bus stop and in New York City, we have these, like, bus covers. And so he has me put my hands up against the bus cover and stick my booty out while he's, like, <laughs> cleaning the back of my thighs. And people are just passing by, watching, probably thinking, like, what the hell is this kinky stuff going on in public? Um, but it was really, really fun. And it was my first entry into the dating world in a long time. And all the nerves just went away when I could be myself, you know, it was, it's sort of symbolic, like hopping over the fence, kind of like that crossing over. So like, right. this me, you know, and it worked out. I mean, he and I are together till this day. So. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. That was going to be my question is, you know, did the date, something come out of that date, but it sounds like you're still together. Yes, it was a journey. I still wanted to date other people and see what it was like to really just get to know different people and know myself. But somehow he's the only one who stuck around. So, <laughs> Are you guys now in a relationship? You know, what happened after that first date? 
So after that first date, we kept in touch and we saw each other. So I, I had that summer off as a teacher. I worked summer school, but had a lot of free time. So it was perfect because like um, I had moved back home after like the breakup of breaking up with the guy I was with before. And that was a long term relationship and moving back home. I'm being on my mother's couch and my mom and I don't have the best relationship. It was very difficult. So he kind of provided a space for me to come over, be myself. Um, and so we spent a lot of time together, but I also wanted to date other people. So I was dating other people, but some reason he still, like I said, he stuck around. So we met in June. We traveled together in August. It was his first time being out of the country. We went to Canada. And mm -hmm. then that December, he took me home to meet his family. But we weren't boyfriend and girlfriend. And it was very confusing for me. I was just like, wait a minute. We're doing all these things. We're basically... We're doing everything boyfriends and girlfriends do, right, right. but there's no title. And I knew that he had people that he still didn't have closure with and still doesn't. And, you know, I get that. It's not for me to judge, but it was very, it was difficult for me. So we ended up taking a, it was a month long break that turned into a two month long break where we didn't speak at all and then got back together. We were like, we're just going to be friends. And then we were like, no, let's try this. And so now we're boyfriend and girlfriend. Um, he wanted to be in an open relationship. And so that was something that I had to compromise with. And so in order to kind of balance that out or to balance that out, I got to set a lot of the boundaries and the rules going forward. And it's still very difficult, especially um, for me, because I'm used to like monogamy and I was with someone right. for six years. I never had to question my worth and being put in a situation where you're like, oh, I'm not enough for this person. And mm -hmm. understanding that that's okay. We're not going to be everything to one person. Um, and so I, 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 it's taught me a lot about myself. Yeah. And, and it's brought up a lot, of, uh, a lot of things from my past that I need to work on in terms of my self-esteem and um, mm -hmm. kind of like what I want out of a relationship and what I deserve or what I know I deserve. Um, but it's also been the healthiest relationship I've been in because there has to be a lot of communication and oh, we talk, okay. we talk a lot. <laughs> That's great. <A> lot. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. actually, can you put a little bit of context? I mean, I am not, I've never been in, nor do I really quite understand or even know what that means. I mean, I have my assumptions. Yeah. What is an open relationship? Like, what does that entail? Um, well, I can say what it entails for us because it can be different for different people. So for us, it would be like we're together and we're primary partners. So we have a hierarchy. Other people don't really have, not everyone has a hierarchy, but we have a hierarchy. Uh, we're primary partners and we're allowed to see other people. And okay. we talked about what that means because some people, you can have relationships with other people. For other, other people, it's just sex. And I think we're at, we're at the point, like when we discussed, it was just like, you know, we can see other people, but nothing really too serious. Um, and if that does happen, then we talk about it and we reassess. Um, mm -hmm. But again, it's, it's, it's just right now, it's for me, it's, I don't know if it's, I would say I'm a, I'm a person who, who would do this forever. I, I don't see myself doing this forever. I think it's just mm -hmm. what works for this partner and me. Yeah. You know, um, and it's just something that I was like, okay, I really want this person in my life and I'm willing to do that and keep this person in my life. And he also has been making a, a huge effort to make sure that I feel very secure and loved and, and safe. And I appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, that's, um, yeah. thanks for describing that, but I mean, I, I don't know that I will be personally cut out for that because I mean, they... <laughs> kind of poses a question in my mind of don't you feel jealousy? I mean, isn't, you know, <laughs> oh, oh yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, all the time. Um, and, and, and it's just like, uh, it's an, it's a natural thing to feel. Yeah. You're going to feel jealous. I don't think that you're going to feel that even if you're in a monogamous relationship. Well, to be mm -hmm. honest, I never did in my last relationship. It was weird, but, um, I noticed that a lot of it stems from like my own issues and not things that he does. And if, um, and if there is something that he is doing that causes me to feel that way, then it's up to me to bring that up to him and then we work it out. Okay. But a lot of it is like my own insecurities, you know, and, and, and 
overanalyzing things. Um, so yeah, but you do feel you. Do, I I feel jealousy. I don't know um, about him if he does. He doesn't say it, but <laughs> yeah, it's it's yeah. hard. It's hard. But I think we're just allowing each other to just be ourselves, you yeah. know. And and it's also nice because I talk to people and I don't feel guilty about you know, being really flirty. And there are things that I would like for my partner to mm -hmm. offer me that he can't. And so I can, I find that in other people and I'm open with that, uh, about that with him. And for yeah. me, it's not a sexual thing. It's mm -hmm. more of just like that connection and like talking to people because my partner's very busy. We can't always talk on the phone. And so being able to reach out to someone and that kind of stuff. Um, and then, you know, whatever his, he does, that's his thing. So, mm -hmm. Yeah do you put a time frame in terms of like how long you you'll be in an open relationship and you know because i'm thinking from a traditional sense like i want to get married and if i do get married it's to this guy one person not seeing other people um yeah. so is that something that's even something you discuss yeah i mean again every relationship is different we've discussed it because i have to give myself a deadline and mm -hmm. I told him I said I'm giving myself a time a deadline and when that time is up it's not saying that it's going to be over but it's a time for me to check in with myself and say do I want to continue with this or do I not and I didn't tell him the date I'm um, keeping that to myself I just let him know I gave myself like a personal deadline to really like okay. figure out what I want to do going forward uh -huh. um but I didn't tell him because I feel like that's personal to me. And I don't also want to put him in a place where he feels pressured right. to give me this thing that I want or, you know, that I think I want right now. So, right. yeah. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You know, maybe I'm the only person who doesn't know what open relationships are. I've heard people yeah. actually say, or even like on a TV show where people talk about open relationships, but I never really quite understood. I mean, I, from the, from the words open relationships, you can tell that it's something that's open to, you know, maybe see other people, but I never really actually um, had talked to anybody who's been in one. So I, I loved hearing from your perspective, what that looks like from, uh, from the two of you. Yeah. So, um, do you want to talk about, do you have another dating story perhaps that you want to share with my audience that, oh. <laughs> that was memorable, funny, and <laughs> the guy, there was this guy I met on Tinder. I tried Tinder and yeah. I hated it. So then I moved to OKC and I had better luck on OKC, That's but I met okay this guy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Keep it. But then I canceled that too. It's too stressful. So I met this guy on Tinder, is Dominican. So I was like, oh, Dominican, like me, great, professional, like me, yay. And we meet, and he's uh -huh. handsome, he's tall, he has a nice caramel color. And then he opens his mouth, and his voice is so <laughs> monotone and slow. And we sit down to talk, and I'm having such a hard time paying attention that I swear I fell asleep with my eyes open. Because <laughs> all I know <laughs> is time passed, and I'm just like, what did he just say and I'm just like nodding and then trying to be really insightful and like making observations about what's happening around us right. because I have no idea what he's talking about <laughs> and then he like try to be all cute and say something like I feel like I'm staring at a miracle and I was just like oh me yeah I know <laughs> <laughs> um and you know and I try to be nice because I don't know where that comes from. Right, right. It could just, you know, um, but I was like, I, I, I can't even like be engaged when we're having a conversation. So this is not going to work out. And I was just like, we can be friends. Right, and right. of course that didn't happen. <laughs> so maybe we should give people a little bit of context because we don't want to sound like we're laughing at somebody with like, you know, neurological issues or something. Yes, yes. No, it was more, I mean, I'm a special ed teacher and I'm trying to be extremely mindful of people with disabilities. Um, and, and it's more just like I'm laughing at myself and how I just could not stay focused. Right. And and I felt bad because I just, and so it was, it would not have been fair to me or to him to continue right. on knowing that I just, I can't stand listening to you <laughs> because I, I just, I can't, I can't tune in. 
you know? Right, right. Um, but he was a very, very nice guy, and I wish him all the best. He was looking for a job at the time, and I'm sure he, he found something, but yeah. It sounds like there was no second <laughs> date then. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> none at all. Didn't even hear back. Um, <laughs> yeah, there was another guy I really hit it off with on Tinder. Uh -huh. And then he goes, we're talking. He's like, hey, do you know? And I'm just going to use a different name. He's like, do you know Jay? And I'm like, which Jay? And he, like, tells me the last name. And I'm just like, oh, yeah. He was like, you used to date him? I'm like, yeah. And why? He's like, well, because he's my best friend. <gasps> and I was like, oh. Oh, my God. He's trash. And so if you're friends with him, you're probably trash too. <laughs> um, and it just really sucks because like, we kind of, we were like vibing and stuff, but it was my first boyfriend and it was an extremely toxic relationship. And, and I was yeah. like, I, I, I can't have that. And he's like, and I can't do that to my friend. But I thought that that was really interesting how small the world is. I was going to see, and you're in New York City. I mean, how... What are the chances of you running into somebody <laughs> who's best friends with your ex, you know? I know. And he's like, you don't remember me? I was like, I don't remember you. <laughs> like, <laughs> gotta, oh, my God. Whatever. Yeah. yeah, we actually set a date, and we had to cancel it after that. I was like, no, the day before we canceled it. So. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I don't blame me at all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wow, this is awesome. I'm so glad you were able to like share your dating stories with my audience. And I certainly enjoyed hearing them. And, you know, so now I'm just curious for our audience. Um, you know, you have gone on dates and now you're in an open relationship. Um, what would be like your advice to people that are out there looking for love? I would say to keep your doors open take a chance. You know, if, if I had just like stuck to my old ways of like, I need to be in this certain type of relationship, I wouldn't have been, um, I wouldn't be in this relationship that I'm in now where I feel like I am a stronger person and I'm really working on myself and my partner's working on himself. So yeah, I would just say, be open to how love presents itself in your life. And if you feel that, you know, it's something you, you're willing to take a chance on, then do that. And if, and if not, then, then that's okay too. But just, just, just trust, trust the universe and trust yourself. That's what I would say. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Well, thank you for letting me come on and share. I'm still, you know, I, I'm still figuring my life out as, as many of us are. So hopefully, you know, this helps people kind of um, have some hope, you know, that it's right. not all bad. You might find, you know, a pleasant surprise at the end. Like I didn't think I was going to end up with this person and that things would be going so well, given that I – I'm in a type of relationship that I'm not used to being in. And, and so, yeah, you just, you might surprise yourself. So don't give up on dating or love. It's out there in many forms. So yeah. just be yeah, open. You are still right about that. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for tuning into this week's episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. Do you have a love story? Or do you know somebody with a love story? If so, shoot me an email, k-a-n-u-k-a-y-i at gmail.com. Please go to my YouTube channel, Real Love, Real Stories Podcast, and subscribe. And also follow me on Instagram and Facebook, Real Love, Real Stories. Till next time.